So this is the iodine clock. And in this figure right here, I have 25 milliliters of 0.2 molar potassium iodate and 175 milliliters of distilled water. And in this figure, we have 10 milliliters of 0.2 molar um, so sodium me metabisulfate and 30, milli 30 milliliters of 2% starch and 40 milliliters of H2O. And I'm just going to add it. Never changed. So, when there's a uh, lower concentration for the uh, reactants, there will be less molecules to collide with each other. So, therefore, the products will form slower, and that's why the initial clock reaction took a longer time. Here in beaker A, we have four times as much potassium iodate as we had in the original reaction, which should speed up the reaction. Uh, now with four times the concentration, there's many more molecules to collide with each other. So there's a uh, higher frequency of collisions and therefore the products will form much quicker, which is why the clock happened much faster. So not only does concentration affect the um, rate of reactions, but temperature also does. And so temperature with an ink, so at this point, um, the average kinetic energy shows uh, is shown by the peak and um, if we say that the activation energy is, is about here, then this fraction right here represents the amount of molecules that have sufficient energy to, over to overcome the activation energy bar barrier. And so this is the curve at this specific temperature. However, when the temperature is increased, and the average kinetic energy is now at a much higher uh, velocity than the um, fraction of molecules with enough uh, kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy is much greater. And this is because the average kinetic energy is a measure of temperature because average kinetic energy equals 3 halves RT. And therefore, with an increase in temperature, it will result in more frequent and more efficient uh, collisions, resulting in an increase in reaction rate.